So let me show you how I pop that wheelie. This is my 48 volt easy go cart. So obviously I have no lead acid batteries in there. That is a 48 volt pack lithium ion battery from bigbattery.com. Uh, link in the description to this one specifically. They have others in higher and lower capacity. This one is 95 amp hours, which give or take is roughly the same equivalent as you're gonna get uh, with your lead acid batteries. But here's the difference, right? That thing only weighs 63 pounds. Each lead acid battery weighed 60 to 65 pounds. So that's a weight savings of nearly 300 pounds. And it, the whole suspension does not even sit as low as it used to. Uh, it came up a little bit there and there. And you can certainly feel it when you're driving. So all you got to do is floor the, the go pedal and it'll pop the front wheels off the ground. Now this isn't, the rest of the cart's not stock, right? I've got an aftermarket Altrex controller as well as an aftermarket motor. But these are not super, super high performance parts. Uh, it wouldn't even come close to popping a wheelie on lead acid before, but now it just pops right up. So I love this battery. It's super easy to hook up. I did put in a uh, plastic floor. There's a link in the description. It's I think it's half inch HDPE. It's basically the same stuff they make cutting boards out of. And I just bolted it down uh, to the battery tray. I had to cut two pieces in there and it fits in there nicely. Uh, the little bracket is just made out of a, a scrap of that same kind of plastic along with some thread and rods going through and some nuts on top. So it takes, if you need to take it out, it takes two seconds to take it out and two seconds to put it back in. Super easy to hook up, comes with the Anderson connector, which just easily unplugs and plugs back in. And that goes down here, pop that off, to my um, bus bars. So I've got bus bar for positive and negative where all your stuff just hooks up there super easy. Same thing with the negative. Let me pop that guy off. Uh, you'll notice right here, this is also my shunt I have for measuring uh, the voltage and the amp hours used, so you know exactly what your range is. And I'll show you more about that in a second. But sorry, back to the battery. Uh, we've got a breaker, so if you need to switch it off or you pull too many amps, which I never have, and I've hit, um, I'll show you the chart, but I've, I can easily hit 250 amps and this thing won't, won't flip. And that's what it's rated for, 250 amps. So it'll probably has to be sustained for a little bit, but right when you accelerate, it peaks at 250 and then it usually drops down uh, to below hundred. But you can flip that off if you need to. You have a built-in voltage, voltage readout if you need to, you know, if you need it. Um, let's talk more about that shunt. I really like that shunt. So has one wire that runs up here to the dash. And so even with the cart off, this thing works. And this is great. So I have a 95 amp hour pack. So I just charged it. So you can see that uh, it's set to 100%. You charge it up fully, you hit the, the reset button. So you have 95 amp hours and then the percentage will start to go down. So you can see right now with the cart on, it's pulling right at 0.7 amps just with my reducer and the controller and the radio and I do have the lights on I guess I should turn off my lights see it drops just a little bit and if you turn off the key it goes down to almost nothing and it'll it'll go to sleep but you can fully disconnect power and it remembers your percentage and your capacity so this is way better than just reading the actual voltage to see uh, how many miles you got left uh, when it has that little down let's see if I can zoom has that little down uh, minus sign triangle, that means you're using power. And then if you either use regen braking, like when you let off the gas pedal, or you charge it up, you'll see a little arrow up here and it'll put uh, energy back into the battery. So anyways, this thing is only like 40 bucks on Amazon and it is super handy, especially for lithium carts. The other good thing is you still get to use the stock charger and the stock charging port. From here, it just connects up to the bus bar and charges the battery. The internal BMS, the battery management system inside of this, will take the voltage from your stock EasyGo charger and convert it to whatever it needs to charge this lithium battery and then turns off when it's done. And let's just talk a little bit about battery maintenance. 
with battery maintenance, uh, lead acid batteries are a pain in the butt. You gotta fill them up with distilled water, they spill over, you leak acid all over your frame and all over your driveway and you have acid stains. This battery requires no maintenance. You just charge it and, and then run it, right? And you don't need to charge it after each use like you're supposed to with lead acid. You can run this all the way down to, I have it set to about 20% and then I charge it back up. And the range is good too, uh, 25 to 30 miles depending on how you drive. So overall, the lithium build is pretty easy. Here's a couple of the photos during the process. Here's the lead acid batteries before I started. And then we have the metal frame that was all rusty from the acid leaking on them over the years. Sanded that off real quick and then gave it a couple coats of spray paint to get it looking new again. Uh, that's cutting out the HDPE plastic to be the new floor of the battery tray. There it is bolted in. Here's what the battery looks like when it arrives. There it is just set in there doing a test fit after I got the plastic floor in. And there's the close-up of the mounting bracket. There's the bus bars and there's the bus bars installed to the plastic floor with the shunt. And there's the capacity meter mounted. And after all that, you get to do wheelies. Thanks for watching.